Supermassive black holes are some of the most powerful and awesome cosmological objects in the entire universe. They have masses millions of times that of our Sun, and absorb debris at an astounding rate. At the center of every galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole, around which all the stars in their solar systems orbit. Astrophysicists have come up with numerous theories for how these enormous voids form, and why they exist at the middles of galaxies. Welcome back to 26 Dimensions, the space exploration and astrophysics channel here on YouTube. Today, we're going to discover how supermassive black holes form. There are at least four different classes of black hole, with a possible fifth that is yet to be confirmed. Stellar black holes are created by collapsing giant stars at the end of their sequences. Miniature black holes are a theoretical concept proposed by Stephen Hawking in 1971 which could exist at a quantum level. Intermediate black holes are hundreds of times the size of a stellar black hole, but they don't have the strength of a supermassive black hole, which is hundreds of thousands or millions of solar masses and extremely powerful gravity-wise. Large stellar black holes are formed when supergiant stars with more than critical masses run out of their hydrogen field and collapse in on themselves. When this happens, they tend to collapse and then explode over and over again releasing waves of extremely powerful energy. For a short time, this energy released by this collapsing, exploding event is greater than the light released by several entire galaxies. But collapsing stars alone do not form supermassive holes. These black holes are typically several million solar masses heavy, and just one star is capable of creating the huge space-time singularity that is in the center of the supermassive black hole. The heaviest known star in the universe, R136AL, has just over 265 times the mass of the Sun, nowhere near enormous enough to collapse into a supermassive black hole. However, it is possible for many smaller black holes to create an alumgam of singularities, combining to create one super large black hole. If enough giant stars collapse near to each other at the right time, they'll attract each other together and create a supermassive black hole. The constituent singularities are stellar black holes left over when giant stars collapse. So far, they effectively create a point of infinite density that warps the space around it. As the void grows in size and the black hole gains a stronger gravitational influence, it'll begin to absorb much of the space debris that surrounds it, expanding exponentially. During this time, the void will begin rapid gas accretion. This is when the black hole begins to pull in space debris from an accretion disk around it. There is a fine balance for this to happen. If the angular momentum of the black hole is too fast, then the accretion disk will be forced away. It has to be slow enough that the friction between debris and the accretion disk causes gas to fall into the event's horizon. Astrophysicists believe that the supermassive black holes were among the earlier cosmic objects in the universe, with many forming around the 1 billion years mark in the universe's lifetime. If this is true, then many of the galactic black holes have been around since the early dawn of time, when the first stars were being forged in the expansion of the cosmos. Such theories answer a lot of questions about the formation of supermassive black holes, but there are still big gaps in our understanding of why they exist and how they manage to grow so large. A relatively new paper published in the monthly notice of the Royal Astronomical Society in 2006 suggests that there is another way that these singularities form, and it involves a gravitational collapse process during the formation of galaxies. Protogalaxies are the baby galaxies of the universe, hundreds of thousands of light years across and composed of light gases like hydrogen and helium. They're contained within massive dark matter halos, which are invisible regions of space, millions of light years across and gravitational bound, keeping them stable against the expansion of the universe. Modern theory suggests that a single dark matter halo contains many galaxies and gives birth to protogalaxies, in a way kind of like how nebulae give birth to protostars. The paper published by the Royal Astronomical Society proposes that supermassive black holes can be formed out of the gas in these dark matter halos. In the halo, this gas is self-gravitating, meaning the gravitational forces between the nuclei pull the material together and prevent it from dissipating due to its heat. Over time, this gas loses angular momentum, that is, it spins slower and slower due to what the paper names runaway instabilities. For a supermassive black hole to form, the gas has to have a slow enough angular momentum for gravitational infall to begin. As this happens, a huge mass of gas is compressed exponentially fast, eventually forming a singularity and creating a supermassive black hole. 
The pre-galactic halo collapse model only works under certain conditions. For example, the temperature of the light gases has to decrease rapidly to cause the instabilities that push the mass to collapse. At the moment, the paper's authors believe that the heat of gases is lost through thermal neutrino emission as the black hole grows. As we run more computer simulations and build a stronger understanding of gravity and galaxy formation, hopefully we'll come to a conclusive answer to how supermassive black holes form. You've been watching 26 Dimensions, the space exploration and astrophysics channel here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll consider subscribing so you can see similar videos from my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.